okay so uh, let's look at uh, now transistor transistor logic it is also called as ttl ttl means transistor transistor logic <clears throat> now we are already aware of dtl gates uh, dtl uh, logic family where we had two diodes like this uh, connected to the input and this is the diode which is separating the inverter and the AND gate so it is basically NAND gate R1 R2 was there VCC R3 minus VEE then Y is the output Q1 is the transistor we have already seen the working of this in uh, DTL uh, circuits now this serves as an AND gate now I am trying to modify some things for example I will be removing this part and I am replacing this part of three diodes with this transistor multi emitter transistor multi emitter means it has more than one emitter uh, with the same base and collector okay so R1 and R2 are same you can see I have removed this part here and I have replaced this three diode combination of three diodes with this multi emitter transistor here you can see it is a NPN transistor right arrow is going out of the transistor so it is NPN NPN means it is a PN junction is here one PN junction and two PN junctions are here because two lines are there so these two diodes are represented by these two lines this diode is represented by this line so there is a PN junction right uh, that's how you are representing this guy here it is a P here it is N and here also it is N right so this pn junction pn 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 and here you have input right so same circuit i have taken i have did some modification and it became ttl nand gate okay now the working will be slightly different than what you had here i will be telling you now the working of this circuit i hope you are convinced it i have removed just this part it is not required now here uh, this will be uh, this will be uh, explained in the in the working when I'll uh, show uh, when I'll tell you here whatever the three combination of diodes were I have represented with a single transistor with multiple emitters okay if you'll have more inputs you'll have more lines more emitters three inputs three emitter line four inputs four emitter line I'm calling the transistor as Q2 this is Q1 rest of the circuit is same this is still working as NAND gate I'm, I'll be build, I will be telling you how it is working as NAND now I am explaining the working of this circuit let's say you have A equal to B equal to 0.2 volt 0.2 volt means both are low or A is equal to 0.2 volt B is equal to 5 volt means one of them is uh, high and uh, other one is low here also you can see A is equal to 5 volt B is equal to 0.2 volt low means I am applying 0.2 volt high means I am applying 5 volt okay if any of these three combination will be there then what happens your Q2 will be inactive you can see if any of them or both of them will be logic low this provides a path from VCC to this A and B 0.2, 0.2 volt and you will be uh, having a current flowing through R1 that is base current and uh, this guy will be working in active region okay uh, since you are having here uh, current coming uh, from the R1 branch and here you have a 0.7 here you have uh, some 0.2 volt so it is forward biased right and you will see that the current will be coming and it will be having sufficient beta so IC will be coming from this side okay and IE will be on this side right ib plus ic is equal to ie this will be working in normal mode or active region you can say so current coming out of q1 tells you that charges is being sucked out from q1 that is it is being taken to cutoff state okay ic is going out of q1 q2 is cut off not q2 q1 is cut off okay q1 will behave as cut off there is no such current like coming out of uh, q1 but it reflects that charges is being taken out from the base of the q1 that leads to cut off region uh, q1 going to cut off region if this goes cut off your vcc will be y 
right y will be equal to vcc that will happen in any of these three cases okay um, so uh, if you will have a equal to 0 b equal to 0 0.2 uh, a equal to 0 0.2 b equal to 5 a equal to 5 b equal to 0 0.2 volt in all three cases this is the working okay ic will come out this will be in active and this will be in cutoff okay so output will be vcc now what will happen if both of them are logic high i'll tell you by the way if you want to see how it works as a as a active region this guy how it is working as active region you can see if any of them let's say uh, a is 0 0.2 volt right and this is high so it is uh, not providing any uh, path from uh, vcc to b uh, any of them means i am taking a is equal to 0 0.2 volt and b is equal to 5 volt okay so b will not provide any path it will be open right and um, because this is connected to vcc and here you are having you want 0 0.7 but you are you are applying 5 volt it is reverse by from this side okay but this size is providing uh, forward bias right so if a is equal if a is equal to 0 0.2 volt right what will happen this point will be 0 0.7 plus 0 0.2 right uh, i am calling as vb okay base base vb this is vb vb is equal to 0 0.2 volt plus 0 0.7 volt right 0 0.2 plus 0 0.7 it is 0 0.9 right and here if you will see this is forward biased you 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 got it right but here it should be re reverse by that's when q2 will be inactive right so here you can see this is 0 0.7 Right. this is also 0.7 this is a pn junction right this is also a pn junction and why i'm calling this point as 0.7 volt because pn junction at max can have 0.7 or 0.8 volt of cut in voltage so if it is a pn junction uh, it will be having 0.7 or 0.8 uh, volt of cut in voltage only okay so i'm assuming that it is 0.7 it will be near by this however is uh, vbe this is uh, proper 0.7 volt only so i'm assuming 0.7 plus 0.7 so according to uh, from from this side it this this point has to be uh, 1.4 right 0.7 plus 0.7 vb should be 1.4 that is uh, 0.7 plus 0.7 volt 0.7 from this 0.7 from this this should be one point uh, more than 1.4 or 1.5 then only this guy will be forward biased right because total it has to switch on right so but if what you are getting you are getting 0.9 volt from here right but you want 0.4 so uh, uh, 1.4 so you can see that this voltage is less than required 1.4 voltage hence this is reverse bias and this is forward bias that's how q2 is in active okay uh, just an addition to explanation to how it is uh, uh, in working in active region now we will see what will happen when a and b will be equal to both are equal to 5 volt okay now let's look at how the circuit will work when both the inputs are high that is 5 volt 5 volt here you are applying 5 volt 5 volt now from the right side from this side we have seen that if you have to uh, keep this pn junction in forward biased you need 1.4 or more volts at this vb point right vcc will be around uh, let's say 5 volt this will be typical value and this will be around 4 kilo ohm. now what will happen you will have you are applying 5 volt from this side right there will be some drop uh, and uh, you can imagine 4 4.5 volt will be there right from this point uh, at this point now you can see you are applying 5 5 volts here you need at least here 5 volt plus 0 0.7 more than 5 uh, or equal to 5.7 volt here so that this junction will be forward bias but you are not having that much voltage so this pn junction will be reverse bias whereas this pn junction will be forward bias because you are applying more than 1.4 volt at this point okay 5 volt with, with some drop will be uh, you can calculate right uh, i mean if you want uh, you can calculate 5 minus 1.4 uh, 1 volt minimum 1.4 volt you want divide by uh, 4k you will get the current and all so you'll you'll be able to see that this this is reverse biased right you are applying 5 volt here 0.7 it requires plus uh, 
so 5 plus 0.7 at least 5.7 or more than 5.7 you it requires but you are applying the supply voltage itself is 5 volt and there will be a drop here so no way it is going to be forward bias but this guy can be forward bias because it needs only 1.4 volt here to get this junction forward biased and it will be there right so that way q2 will be in reverse active this is forward uh, reverse bias and this is for forward bias means it is a reverse active uh, base emitter is reverse base collector is forward okay so that's why it is working in re reverse active mostly you won't see uh, in analog electronics uh, transistor working in this region reverse active but this is one application where you can see that transistor is working in reverse active mode what will be the effect of it the emitter will behave like collector and collector will behave like emitter still there will be a base current right uh, there will be a difference in voltage and divide by r you will do will get the base current now what will happen from here the collector current will come okay this is behaving as a collector but in reverse active mode usually you have beta equal to 0 0.01 around okay beta very less in active mode you have beta very high but in reverse active you have beta very less so it is ic divided by ib uh, ratio is very less means all the base current will be equal to the emitter current this is behaving as emitter current whereas collector current will be sort of negligible type so the sum of it uh, will uh, will not be affected much it will be basically equal to base current only so since the current uh, emitter current this is behaving as emitter in reverse active it is throwing current at q1 and this current will be sufficient enough to drive this q1 into saturation and if this will be in saturation your y will be 0.2 volt that is low okay so that is how it is working again i am telling you since you are applying 5 volts here this junction becomes low because this point needs 5.7 volt to make this junction forward bias but you are not having that okay so this junction will be reverse bias this will be forward bias because it needs only 1.4 volt here or more than 1.4 volt so forward bias here reverse bias here so hence it is act, uh, reverse active means current coming from here here and it is going there q1 is getting sufficient current it is working as in saturation and hence output becomes low that is 0 0.2 volt so for input a 0 0 0 1 or 1 0 you are having output high and for 1 1 input you are having output low so it is behaving as NAND gate okay so this is a TTL NAND gate but it has some uh, drawbacks or uh, some shortcomings that we have to uh, address and some modification will be there so modified TTL I will make next and with uh, with uh, some some reasons i will tell you but this is what well, this was the basic one and now there will be some modifications and then we will get the proper ttl nand gate circuit okay